This is Yahoo Finance Live. We're just about a minute from the opening bell here on this Monday morning. Just a few trading days left till Christmas. Not too many trading days left uh, thus far in 2021 either. And Ooh, it is a rocky end to the year, isn't it? We're seeing all three major averages indicate a drop of at least 1% at the open. And Saz, the sentiment this morning is decidedly risk off, um, a lot of it having to do with the virus once again. Yeah, and this has been a tough, uh, it looks to be a tough market open here, Julie. Dow down more than 400 points. You're te seeing te tech stocks still under pressure here. Work from home names uh, doing well. Looks like, it almost feels like mid-2020 all over, except the broader market is holding up pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at some of the groups that are most affected typically by COVID in just a moment. But here is the opening bell on this Monday. And the folks at luxury brand Zenia are ringing the opening bell this morning. They're going public through a SPAC deal today, and we are going to be joined by executives. Uh, from that entity uh, just a bit later on in the show. Uh, interesting, uh, one of the first, I believe it is the first Italian luxury house to list here in the United States. So again, here this morning, we are looking like a drop in, at the open. Combination here of virus concerns and what kind of economic impact that is now going to have and what appears to be the death of the Build Back Better Act uh, at the hands of Joe Manchin. So that last bit of economic uh, and fiscal stimulus not coming through. And so as we go now into 2022, we know that monetary stimulus is going to be ebbing as the year goes on between the wind down of the Fed's bond buying program and, um, of course, interest rate increases that are expected to come. And now we know the fiscal stimulus that maybe was going to come through is not, in fact, going to come to, through. Then put Omicron on top of all of that, and you've got a downdraft in markets here right now. Um, so we want to circle back to some of the some of the usual contenders when it comes to stocks that see weakness when we get virus resurgences. Travel stocks, of course, a prime example of that. And we are indeed seeing selling in that sector this morning. Carnival, by the way, also just out with numbers. I haven't had a chance to go through them yet, Saz. I know that you've been uh, looking at them. What do we know thus far about these numbers? Yeah, that's why I was actually looking down right now uh, at my notes here uh, and not at the screen here, Julie. And Carnival, uh, interesting results. Now, we just talked to Carnival CEO Arnold Donald last week telling us, uh, really, I think, striking an optimistic note. And I'm seeing that a little bit here in this release. Uh, Carnival noting book advanced bookings for the second half of 2022 and the first half of 2023 are at the high end of historical ranges and at higher prices uh, with strong demand and pricing. So Carnival noting that, also noting uh, total liquidity, $9.4 billion at the end of the fourth quarter. Those are positive. But again, uh, Julie, can those bookings stay uh, at those levels uh, given everything we see with Omicron? You know, I flagged this morning here, you see a, a ship coming uh, for out of Royal Caribbean uh, coming back from its, uh, from its travel with 50 passengers that had COVID. So uh, can these bookings stay strong or do you see customers cancel like they were back in uh, in 2020 uh, when when the pandemic was really uh, raging forward? Yeah, it does feel like whatever Carnival would say today is going to be overwhelmed by these virus headlines. Right. And the headlines on that Royal Caribbean cruise as well, because the question is, if we're seeing these new resurgences are is that going to make people again think twice about booking cruises that seems to be reflected that sentiment seems to be reflected in what we're seeing today in the stocks and then of course if you look at the airlines the hopes that business travel was going to come back that international travel mm -hmm. was going to come back and that it was going to help these guys um, because we've already seen a recovery, but the la as we know, the last little way to go has to do with business, has to do with international. And, you know, this really, this latest surge of Omicron really seems to put that to rest, the idea that that's going to come back imminently, right? And again, that's reflected in the stocks this morning, Saz. Well, Julian, that's the other problem here. We are in a little bit of a, 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 a vacuum in terms of corporate news releases. You had a lot of companies present uh, and investor banks earlier this month. Some have had investor days, analyst meetings here, come out with guidance. Uh, those companies, I, I, you can really probably no longer rely on those results 
uh, or that guidance, depending on the company. I look at Delta. Delta came out last week, Investor Day, very upbeat guidance looking out to 2023. But can you believe that guidance in light of new incoming information with Omicron? The answer is probably not. Yeah, that that most definitely the problem here. Now, the, the flip side, the other side of the coin, right, is that if we are back to the pandemic trading playbook, travel is down and work from home stocks are up, maybe, it, you know, that we're seeing a little bit of a comeback of that kind of a trade here. Oh, actually, I stand corrected. We were in the pre-market, no, we but were. that seems to have Zoom faded away. Interesting here. Zoom. So Zoom is is now little change. Pelot oh, it's a little change to the upside, but not not doing great. DocuSign's still down. Peloton's down. I mean, you know, so this is not necessarily uh, trading the same way that we were seeing things trade in the beginning of the pandemic, Saz. Oh, well, Zoom, I, I should now a little bit in the green, Julie, up three tenths of a percent, according to the site. So there we go. But look, Zoom shares have rallied about eight and a half percent over the past five sessions. We have seen that bid uh, go back into a lot, a lot of these work from home names. And it do, does make sense. And you're seeing so many office returns being delayed. And Zoom is the platform that you're probably going to be using because you've been using it throughout the pandemic. Yeah, I guess so. Although, again, that's only a half percent increase, even if it's coming on the back of, uh, of some gains in recent days. And then the other theme that we have to talk about as we talk about the virus is the theme of the vaccine makers and treatment makers, right? Um, and we got the news this morning from Moderna that it had seen some success in its booster against Omicron following on the heels of Pfizer, uh, making some similar comments, although it seems as though Moderna's booster is even more effective against Omicron. So those shares are trading higher by 7%. That's one to watch this morning. Um, also this morning, we are watching all of the vaccine stocks with the exception of Johnson & Johnson, they're trading higher. And then Novavax as well, having some news this morning, getting um, a positive recommendation in the European Union, Novavax, uh, its COVID-19 vaccine. And there was a report from Reuters this morning that Novavax is due to begin deliveries of its vaccine in the first quarter. So not only is it close to getting that full approval, it is ready to deploy that vaccine. So those shares are benefiting as well. So, um, you know, it remains unpredictable. I think it's safe to say, you know, as we watch Zoom sort of vacillate here. Uh, one of the other themes that you've been really focused on is the FANG stocks, and they continue to sell off as well this morning. You know, you could you could have blamed it on on interest rate outlook at one point, but rates are not doing much of anything, and those stocks are still down. Yeah, I mentioned this in the morning brief newsletter, Julie, too. It's hard to find a, a catalyst on the positive side for some of these FANG stocks here, at least into the early part of next year, when you could see fund managers step in here and, and try to pick some short-term bottoms in the like of Facebook, uh, Amazon, Apple, or I should say Meta, Netflix, Google, and some of these other big cap tech names. But I do want to go back to J&J. &J. Uh, you know, J&J &J shares, uh, keep in mind, Julie, this is a company that is trying to split itself up uh, during a pandemic that is clearly not going away and in many instances getting worse. I mean, there's a, that's a tough thing to be pull, pulling off here. And I think that's why you're really not seeing J&J &J shares uh, participate uh, of late in this broader rally in the vaccine names. Yeah, not to mention that their vaccine is not uh, really getting a lot of approval, if you will, from, from the CDC.